lip dip paint. 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 Was the repetitive twizzling of a paintbrush between their lips was the trademark of the 1920s Radium Girls, who painted watch dials for the Radium Dial Company. I'm Avril Bradbury Hoth, and I have been looking into the history of invisible poisons, which led me to the Radium Girls, whose clothes would glow after their factory shifts, ultimately causing them to have fatal health problems. Radium was discovered in 1898 and was turned into an aluminous paint known as Undark. In 1917, the Radium Dial Company was founded in order to produce glowing watch dials so that soldiers could read the time in the dark trenches without giving their location away. At the time, Radium was considered to have many health benefits and was put into a variety of different products, such as toothpaste and tonic water. Due to this, dial painting was considered to be a glamorous job. Not only did the girls get to work with the marvellous health benefits of radium, but they also got paid three times more than the average factory worker. The girls were taught to use a technique called lip pointing, as it resulted in finer brush strokes. Hence, lip dip paint. They always told me radium would never hurt me. A young lady instructed me, told me to put the brush between my... And we did this thousands and thousands of times. It was just the way we were told to do it. It didn't taste funny, it didn't have any taste, and we even ate our lunches on the work tables near the luminous paint. Our superintendent Reed told us it was okay to eat there, but not to let the food spot the dials. The paint particles would land on the girls' clothing, and when and when they would walk home at night, they would glow in the dark. Easily recognized as the girls from the doll factory, they became known as the ghost girls. Many of the girls would wear their good dresses to the plants so that when they went out to parties, they could be luminous. We used to paint our eyebrows, our lips, our eyelashes. We would look at ourselves in the dark room and we glowed in the dark. On my way home at night, my clothing would shine. You could see where I was, my hair, my face, just like the watches in the dark room. Whilst the scientists handling radium used the substance behind lead sheets with masks and tongs, the general public, girls included, were told that the practice of handling radium was completely safe. Each time the girls brought their brush to their lips, they would ingest a small amount of radium. It would be absorbed into their bones, causing them to honeycomb. This caused tumors and major jaw problems, becoming known as necrosis of the jaw or radium jaw. A report was to be commissioned by Dr. Drinker. He stated that the girls' working conditions were unsafe. However, the company did not agree and rewrote the report. It was almost three years after that Dr. Drinker realized we published the report despite the company's threats to sue. After two years, I began to feel pains in my left ankle, which spread up to my hip, and at night, the pain would become unbearable. Many of the girls who had formerly worked at the dial began dying prematurely and of mysterious causes. And it was strange because nobody really seemed to know what was wrong, but we knew something was wrong, really wrong. So I began to put two and two together, and I then came to the conclusion that I had radium poisoning. To cover this up, the girls were given incorrect death certificates, stating that they had died from syphilis. It was almost five years after working for the Dow Company that one of the girls, Grace Fryer, had a doctor attribute her symptoms to working with radium. She decided to sue the United States Radium Corporation. It took her two years to find a lawyer that would take on the case. Four other co-workers joined her, each suing for $25,000.
By the first trial, the women were extremely sick. By the second trial, they were so unwell they couldn't attend. The company repeatedly made attempts to postpone the third trial. The only option was for the girls to settle out of court. They each had to agree to the no wrongdoing of the company and were paid $10,000 each and an additional $600 for each year they continued to live. Their husbands also received a small sum for the loss of service of their wives. Seven years after the trial, all the women had died. If it weren't thanks to media attention, the girls probably wouldn't, the company probably wouldn't have been held accountable. The girls made worldwide headlines, becoming known as the Radium Girls. The doctor told me that my system showed the presence of radioactive substance. And when I first found out and I learned that it was incurable, I was horror stricken. I would look at people I know and I would say to myself, well, I'll never see you again. I don't dare do much with my hands in fear of being scratched. The scratch will not heal because of the radium. I'm still living and hoping. I am facing fate with the spirit of a Spartan. Even now my body gives off a soft luminous glow when it's surrounded by darkness and I don't know which day is going to be my last. The Radium Girls trial resulted in lip pointing being banned, work health, well, work health and safety, personal protective equipment and workers compensation laws all being introduced. However, it wasn't until 1968 that radium was totally banned from use. To highlight this tragic story, I wanted to produce a costume that showcased the events that had taken place. I also wanted to include invisible poisons. So I began looking into glowing textiles. I first looked into LED lights. However, I thought they appeared too modern and I wanted to maintain historical integrity. I then looked into fiber optic fabrics, and I thought if I created a base layer of fiber optic fabrics, it would create a soft illumination. However, the only company that produces these fabrics is in Italy and was closed due to COVID-19. I also looked into UV paint and glowing threads. Prior to my research into the Radium Girls, I came across a dress that was created in 1866 titled The Press. It was made up of 13 different Melbourne newspapers. I found it fascinating a technique existed as early as the 1800s for, pr for printing fabric, I mean, for printing newspapers onto fabric. I decided to use this as my inspiration to showcase my research of the Radium Girls. So I began to look for newspaper articles about the girls. I collected newspapers from the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune archives. And then I created my pattern, scanned it and used Photoshop to create my very own newspaper fabric. I realized I had to slightly warp the newspaper articles in order to create a straight line on a three dimensional body. I then printed and heat set my fabric before commencing the sewing process. In searching for ways to represent invisible poisons in costume, I unearthed a wealth of knowledge on a subject that truly fascinated me. The Radium Girls highlighted a very important but forgotten part of history that has had lasting impacts on us all today. Thank you, Jess, for your time at the Dow Company. I hope it hasn't affected you too much. You may clock out now. <laughs>